Eyes are open, Doctor. Good. Pass me the syringe there, please. Pupil response sluggish. Thank you. Please, doctor. They say they want to talk to him as soon as he's conscious. We're running IVs in you, so don't worry about dehydration. From what I hear, with your proximity to the accident, you're lucky to be alive. The police, doctor? Yes. Okay, tell them to wait. What do you remember? Nothing. Come on, try. Just anything. Running. Good. You were wearing sweats and running shoes. Car. Car explosion and... A voice. A scream. How about your name? Occupation. Address, friends, family, anything. I can't remember. Why can't I remember? What's what's the matter with me? It's head trauma. It happens. We got you down for some tests. We'll look a little deeper. When can I see him? I see him when I say and not before. Is that clear? not to remember anything? I don't remember anything. Well, I have this report from the officers at the scene. Uh, you said a homicide? Uh-huh. Was someone killed? Yes. Her name was Charlene Bracken. She was an executive secretary for a publishing company, Carter and Hobbs. They say she was a pretty girl. Well, what happened to her? Well, this report's mostly conjecture, but uh, it says that Charlene signed out last night at 12.30. She was working late. Somewhere she was viciously attacked. She was able to get into her car and drive out of the lot. She slammed into a parked car. The gas tank blew. I was there. You were there. We were hoping maybe you'd remember something because uh, our boys killed twice before and you may be our only witness. I remember. The explosion. That's good. Look at me. You were probably out jogging. You only live a couple of blocks from where it happened. You look up. You see the car come tearing out of the parking structure. I don't remember. It crashed right in front of you. There was a big explosion. Flames. I don't remember. Now, I know you were injured, but you were watching. And through the flames, you see a face. You see the killer's face. Sorry. I don't remember. You're not supposed to be in here. You were told. I have a job to do here. I'm going to get the well, job Well, you done. do that. There's been three murders in the past three weeks. Each time the same murder weapon, a claw hammer. Killer uses both sides. Now, you must have heard of something or, or read about it. The news has been all over this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You were just leaving. Am I right, Lieutenant? It's that obvious. I'm going to have a talk with your captain. He's used to it. You said you knew where I lived. How do you know? The ID in your wallet. What's my name? 
Look, this isn't the time or the place. What's my name? Alan Strong. I'm not seeing any obvious physical trauma. No, there's uh, no need for surgery here that I can see. He should be kept under observation, though. See, uh, neurological damage due to uh, head injuries can manifest in other symptoms. Yeah, there's loss of sight, temporary hearing impairment. Sudden paralysis. You know the routine. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say he was a good man, I don't mean that he hadn't had a bad thought now and then, or that he hadn't committed uh, ordinary transgressions against society. But after all, that's the problem of civilized man's soul, isn't it? Tonight at 11, an update on the Hammer Killer's Tuesday night murder of an office worker, and the rumor of a witness who may have been at the scene. Later at 11.30, Brian Bishop will talk to a panel of psychologists about pattern crimes and those who commit them. Thank you, nurse. Alan, how are you feeling? Better, thanks. Your tests look good. No evidence of physical damage. Yeah, well, what about my memory? Only time and therapy will tell. What do you mean, psychiatrist? Any number of things could trigger your memory. It could come back in two minutes or two years. There's no way to tell. You should be thankful that there was no brain damage. What about the pain in my legs? No physical impairment. What are you saying? It's all in my head? You were running at the time of the accident. You may be transferring the effects of the trauma to your legs. When do I get out of here? Tomorrow, you become an outpatient. Here is a list of uh, accredited psychotherapists that I recommend. Call. Set up an appointment schedule. I know you're scared. Who wouldn't be? Is that supposed to make you feel better? Try to rest. <clears throat> I'll see you before you leave. Thank you for your assistance, Doctor. Was he insane? Obviously. I don't think he was insane. I think there was only one side of him in existence, and that side was expressing itself. Good heavens, which side? His evil side. Evil side. The man had been spiritually distorted through shock. That explosion in the gas main last month. Before that, he was a fine, solid citizen. Gentle and kind with his children, deeply in love with his wife. Since then, he had undergone a complete change. Until this afternoon, I found him completely reverted to the animal. Short, CCC, call nine, end station. End station. Is Dr. Cordina to They tell me. Karen Hicks. I'm a psychologist with the Metro Police Department. I'm assigned to your case. I'm going to help you get your memory back. Uh, the doctor already gave me a list of shrinks. Oh, well, you're a special case. Oh, well, yeah, I'm the witness. Don't sound so despondent. Oh, they got you the clothes. I'm glad. Uh, I wasn't sure what to pick up from your apartment. What's it like? Well, you can see for yourself. I'm here to take you home. You should know that all I remember is an explosion. I don't think I saw anything. And I don't like the idea of you waiting for me to conjure up a face like, like some damn sideshow magician. I've got my own problems. Listen, I'm a police officer, granted. But first and foremost, I'm here to help you get your memory back. If in the process you remember a face, fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. You'll get no pressure from me. These are yours. Key to your apartment and the front door.
the entire eighth floor. Who am I? You're Ellen Strong. You're in your 40s, somewhat reclusive. You own an uptown restaurant called Puzzles. You don't have a driver's license or a passport. I guess you really don't need either because you can afford to bring the world to you. None of this means anything to me. I might as well be standing in somebody else's apartment. Did you expect to walk in and just have it all come back instantly? It can happen that way, I guess, but don't expect it. Give it some time. I'd like to be left alone. I understand. When do you want to start? Look, I have no intention of being a pawn. You don't owe anything to the police. You have no contract or court order, and if you feel any duress for my presence, then I'll leave. In that case, thank you very much for the clothes and the ride home. Okay. Oh, if, uh, if you change your mind, if you just want to talk, my number's on the card. Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Strong. I'm oh, sorry about that. You scared me. I thought you were still in the hospital. How are you? Much better. Well, I, I hope you don't mind, but I've been bringing up your groceries while you've been away. Not enough room for it down in my place. I also had to let the cops in a couple of times. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I, I know this is going to sound weird, but you obviously know who I am. Oh, that's right. I forgot. The cops told me. You, you hit your head and... Uh, Sent your memory on a club med vacation. <laughs> well, allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm Kevin Carlisle, a would-be journalist and building super extraordinaire. We met a couple of weeks ago when I first moved in, took over for Frank. Well, uh, why don't I help you put these away? How often do I have this stuff delivered? Twice a week. The guy drops the stuff off down at my place. Do you mind if I get a drink? Uh, no, I'll join them. So you're a writer, huh? Yeah, I moved here from Minneapolis. Wanted a shot at journalism in the big city. The super job gets me free rent, so I have a chance to write. Mm -hmm. How's it going? I'm fielding some offers. Yeah, what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, I'm freelance until I can show them something that'll turn a few heads. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe you can help me out. How's that? Well, these, uh, these hammerhead killings. I mean, the public always seems to be interested in pattern killers. I mean, think about Jack the Ripper. So? Well, you're right in the thick of it. I would love to get a chance to get your viewpoint, your feelings, so that, uh... I wouldn't exploit you or anything. Uh, look, <laughs> thanks. I think I could figure this out. Oh, okay. Um, let me change the water bottle for you. Sure. Thank God for elevators. If I had to carry these bottles up eight flights of stairs, I'd be a hunchback by now. Hey! 
No, 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 doctor. I'll be fine. Yeah, help, help. Help. I thought you were going to die on me there. That doesn't look too good on a resume. I'm fine. Better now. Call me Alan, huh? Doctor said there might be some uh, side effects. Well, if you're okay, I better get going. Yeah, thanks for bringing up the groceries. All I got to do now is remember how to cook. Oh, well, if you ever need a chef, I'm your man. French, Italian, Chinese, you name it. Thanks. Oh! Almost forgot your business envelope. The restaurant delivers these every night. What is it? I don't know. Well, duty calls. Somewhere there's a boat to be changed, and only I can change it. Thanks. Difficult. What's that? You looking for somebody? You're trying to find yourself and I'm trying to find a psychopath. It's just a street. It's disappointing, isn't it? People walk back and forth, drive up and down like nothing happened. Somebody was murdered, big deal. You smoke? I'm not sure. Of anything. I know that feeling. You hungry? I haven't been hungry since I woke up in the hospital. Come on. already killed three times. Who knows when he's going to pick up the pace? Now, I need your help. I need you to give me something. Don't you think I would if I could? I need a face. We can protect you if that's what you're afraid of. I'm telling you the truth. I don't remember anything. Maybe you don't think murder's a rich man's problem, so sort of like leave the blood for the working class. The hell with you. Sit down. Come on, help me out. Do it and you won't have to see me no more. You see, I get on people's nerves. 
People hate tenacity. They do, you know. They usually give me what I want just to get rid of me. I wish I could do that, Lieutenant, because you're already getting on my nerves. Oh, yeah? You know, when somebody says amnesia, I want to say bless you. If you've got something to hide, you should tell me. I'll find it out sooner or later. If I'm hiding some, I can't remember what it is. We took a set of your prints when you were in the hospital and I ran. Nothing. You've never been fingerprinted before. Well, that's nice to know. Doesn't mean you're clean. Hey, you need a lift back? I'd rather walk. Be careful, the streets aren't safe. Of course, you know that, don't you? Listen, that'll give a damn what you think. And what you believe. You got no leads, you got no clues, but don't lay your guilt on my doorstep. Go do your job. Pretend I don't exist. Can't do that, Alan. You don't mind if I call you Alan, do you? You see, Alan, you are my job. You're part of it. You may not like it, but you're going to see a lot of me until this job is finished. Understand. You don't feel any warmth at all for your home? None. Should I? Not necessarily. I mean, a head trauma can cause some people's personalities to do a complete 180. Well, that's encouraging. I'm just trying to tell you not to worry about what you feel or don't feel. Just let it come back naturally. I ran into the case cop last night, Madsen. He doesn't believe in amnesia. He thinks I don't want to get involved because I've got something to hide. Well, Madsen can be a real bastard. Sounds like you know him pretty well. We used to be married. Well, this is a setup. Good cop, bad cop. <sighs> Matson and I work totally separate. He does his job, I do mine. Just happens we're on the same case. It just happens you two were married. Right. Listen, Alan, if we're going to make this work, you're going to have to learn to trust me, all right? Well, you'll excuse me if I'm just a little bit paranoid. That's okay. Very healthy reaction. Best place to start looking for a past. Letters, family albums, old diaries. Your history. Maybe I'm not a pack rat. Well, and we'll check public records. Everybody needs to take a trail. I guess you've been doing this a while, huh? What? Police work. Psychology. I left Iowa when my mother died. Came to New York. I wanted to help people. Uh, you can call it cornball if you want. I took psych courses in night school. I became a cop to pay the bills and to get an extra year's class credit. It was in vice for three years. Looks like a diary. Marilyn Strong. Your mother. First generation, Lithuanian and Bulgarian, children of immigrants. Do I have any living relatives? None that we know of. This is scary. I'd like to say I know how you feel, but I'd be lying. I do understand, though.
How's that boy doing? A little shaky, but he's got a right to be. A moment in my office. Let me take a second. It's been a while since you and I shared the same case. Oh, Carl, don't go old times on me. I'm not. I want your opinion. What? Come on, it's late. How do you think he's picking them? There's got to be a pattern. There's no specific area. Do you think it's random? I mean, do I think he just goes out at night and kills who's ever convenient? No. He knows them. He knows where to find them. He's got to be locked in some way. Find out what's strong, though. Don't pressure me, Carl. Carl, I don't care. Back off. My father owned a hardware store. He rented space. Took every cent he had. My mother sewed clothes in the back room to make extra money. They were always just trying to keep their heads above water. But my mother loved him very much. He was kind. He cared about people. Wanted everyone to feel like they were part of the family. He had this uh, uh, mailer book. When customers would come in, they would sign this list so that he could send them information on sales or a, a little gift as a thank you. Calendar or something. He was very kind. <clears throat> the man who owned the building was a real bastard. He, he hated immigrants. He loved taking it out on my father, always tormenting him, always being able to hold eviction over his head. My father said anything. He would come in drunk and uh, stare at my mother, make her uncomfortable. My father felt if he said anything that he could lose the store and we would all starve. And his name was Stoltz. He would come in and uh, insist on signing line seven in my father's book. That was a big joke to him. We'd make my father hold that line open for him. Line seven. Well, one night he came in drunk, late. He signed the book and then proceeded to beat my father unconscious. My mother tried to stop him, but she was uh, not strong enough and uh, Stoltz raped her destroyed my father. He uh, closed the store and things were never the same again. According to my mother's diary, I was there, but I was too young to stop it or to really even understand it. Stoltz was never prosecuted. Why do people do things like that? You know what? I need to get out of this apartment. Are you hungry? I know the perfect place. Step down, sir. There we go. Watch your step. Well, I hope it's nice. Don't be embarrassed if the food is lousy. I've never been here before. on our guest book. Mr. Strong, 
Alan Strong? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that we've never seen you. Uh, I mean, Mr. Kessler gave us the impression that we might never have the pleasure of meeting you. Who's Mr. Kessler? Sir, I, I think you'd better seat us. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Please, follow me. I've never set foot in. You're a recluse. Excuse me a moment. Where are you going? Be right back. I'm Stuart Kessler. I suppose you'd only recognize me from my handwriting. I suppose. Uh, I imagine uh, being hired through the mail and never meeting you and never speaking to you on the phone. Uh, however, uh, we've had two years of wonderful business and uh, your trust in me and uh, in my decisions well, I, I can honestly say these have been the most uh, profitable two years of my life. Hmm. What brings you to us? Nothing unsatisfactory, I hope? No, no, no. I'm just having lunch with a friend. Well, that's wonderful, Mr. Strom. Please enjoy. I'll send a bottle of our best champagne to your table. Good. Throw your weight around? How long were you married? Eighteen months. He was my vice commander, graveyard shift. We became close, and one night at two o'clock in the morning, we were standing in a 24 hour wedding chapel. Why didn't it work? Because we didn't love each other, we just needed each other. You know, in the beginning, we used to talk all the time, and uh, and we stopped talking, and finally we were just yelling at each other. What it came down to was that uh, he wanted someone to wash his socks, and I was looking for the father that I never had. It was nobody's fault. It was just, um, it was just a mistake. Do you think you can find this killer? If anyone can, it's Carl Madsen. He won't rest, he won't sleep, he won't quit until Hammerhead is history. I'll call you later. Thanks for lunch. Uh, no. Thanks. What do you want now? I thought I'd drop by and see if anything had come to mind. No, nothing. Have a chilly day for a walk, don't you think? I was out having lunch. Not that it's any of your business. Alone? Look, Lieutenant, I still remember how to spell harassment. You're my only witness. I don't want anything to happen to you. Nothing's gonna happen. You know, if uh, you saw our boy, he saw you. Then I'd be dead. Maybe he thinks you already are dead. <laughs> Look, we've been keeping the press away from you. We haven't given them a name, an address. But they think we've got a witness and they're digging. So please, keep a low profile, okay? Thanks for the advice. Alan, you didn't answer my question. Were you alone? I'm 
Mr. Strong. Alan, please. Oh, right, sorry. I brought up your wine delivery. Thanks. You know, you're no slouch when it comes to food and drink. I am when it comes to cooking. You ought to bring some of it down sometime and I'll cook it up for you. I get a better idea. Why don't you just stay for dinner? see all sides at once. It's mathematical. Master chef and master chess player? <laughs> My dad taught me not to miss details. Actually, you can apply that to everything in life. See all sides, watch for details. You don't make mistakes. Oh. Check. Damn. That's how cops catch uh, psychos like this hammerhead. Mistakes. How's that? Well, we had a case like this back in Minneapolis. This guy carried out all these killings in exactly the same way. Ritual, minute detail. But at the same time, he didn't see all sides. He made a mistake and he got busted. The cops say what set him off? Family problems when he was a kid. Uh, abuse, trauma, the usual suspects. He buried the hurt, the guilt, the anger. Forgot about it. Let it build up and then one day... Phew. So he killed out of denial. Mm. That's your move. The killer's mistake was that he failed to see the truth within himself. Sounds right. The cops, I mean the good cops, they saw the truth that the killer didn't see. They saw what he was. Plenty of books about it. It's your move. Accident last night. Accident? You want to throw on one of my shirts and give me a hand? Sure. Do you remember what you dreamed? Um. Uh, no, I don't. I just uh, I, I woke up and I was standing in the middle of the living room. You know, sleepwalking isn't uncommon in trauma patients. 
But why last night? Almost anything could have triggered off something in your subconscious, you know, um, something you saw or heard or even read. You know, you got to be really careful when you do that. What are you, some kind of expert? As a matter of fact, take please. Hmm. I painted my entire apartment in one day last spring. Have to just be very precise with your line. Must have been a pretty small apartment. Yeah, you're real good. <laughs> and now what are you going to do? Making you a believer. Oh, really? Yes. Whoa! <laughs> you're real good at this. I can tell you're an expert. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> This shouldn't happen. What? Us. Why not? Because doctor-patient relationships are taboo. I could lose my license. It's too late. It already has happened. Besides, I haven't felt this good since I woke up in the hospital. Maybe I've never felt this good.
Get dressed. Why? I want to take you out for breakfast. I'm not hungry. Neither am I. Get him out of here. His name was Lawrence William Keene, 44 years old. No record. Just up late working on his taxes. Decided to take the train home between 2.45 and 3.15. 3.15. Pull it back. Killer got him from behind. Head, neck, shoulder. The train is fast. Why did you bring me here? Take a look. I said, take a look. You could stop this. I can't! could cause immeasurable damage. I've got four dead. I've got an investigation to run. You know that, Karen. And you know me. I'll do whatever it takes to get that psycho son of a bitch. Carl, please don't cross me on this. I have to decide what is best for Alan. I am responsible for his therapy. His therapy? You mean like a sex therapy? You're working with the wrong head, Karen. You bastard! Where have I heard that before? Nothing. Look at Alan, what is it? Uh, I mean, I is it us? Are you mad because I left? No, no, nothing's wrong. But when we get back, I'd like to start some word association. No, no session today. Why? I need a break. Alan... You said no pressure, remember? What brought this on? I'm just tired, all right? Look, we can't stop work now. I need some time. What about your memory? Maybe I don't want to remember. Alan!
there someplace else. Look, I want to wave a wave flag. Say it was an ass. Okay, you've said it. Goodbye. Didn't you have a session today? Hey, I'm just curious. Something set him off. Probably the crime scene. Do you really believe that? Why shouldn't I? I know you, Karen. You're worried. Was it him? Did you see something? Don't interrogate me, Carl. Okay, you've apologized. Or as close as you ever come. And I've accepted. Or as close as I ever come. Cease fire, okay? Excuse me. Headquarters is one of tension. Officers assigned to Hi. the case have disclosed. How you doing? But the yeah, I brought this for you. Is etched deep Who do you think will knock off tonight? Maybe nobody. Now back I hope you're right. This is the first time the district attorney's office has become involved. Sources close to the DA's investigation have indicated to channel. I love some chess tomorrow night. By the independent counsel are uh, I don't think so. But sometime. Yeah, sometime. Okay. Get some rest. You don't look so good. Thanks. Night. However, the investigation is expected to continue until it's determined whether or not the case will be turned over to a grand jury. Howard? The Hammer Killer's latest victim, Lawrence William Keene, was a 40 year old. Did you get something? No. Sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Look, I, I know that you weren't expecting me. I just wanted to see your face and make sure that you were all right. Fine. Can I come in? <sighs> didn't I make myself clear this morning? No, you didn't. I don't want you here. Look, Alan, I made a commitment to you. And no matter what the problem is, you're still my case. I'd like some answers. What was it you said about duress? I'm still your friend. I'll be on duty all night if you want to call.
right? What? James, you don't look so good. You sure you don't want something to eat? No. In an effort to balance the trade deficit. This just in, there's a late-breaking development in the investigation of the hammer murders that have plagued this city. Reporter Gene Montgomery is standing by live downtown. Gene? Jonathan Edward Powell, a respected attorney, has just become the Hammerhead serial killer's fifth victim. Police still have few evidence. Aside from the murder weapon itself, there are few consistencies to the killer's method. This has left police with a key question. How does the Hammerhead killer choose his victims? Until this question is answered, we must sadly assume the killing will go on. That's it. What have we got so far? Well, we've lifted 35 independents already. We're not even half done. Okay, run them against departmental employees, paralegals, secretaries, anyone that might have come in contact with Powell. Why bother? Hammerhead doesn't leave prints anyway. Look, just run them, okay? What are you doing here? I don't know. <clears throat> Thought maybe I could help. You ready to be a witness? You ready to remember what you saw? Maybe you want to play cop, you know, look at the body, touch the blood, zip up the body bags. Maybe you're just tired of playing doctor. What's that supposed to be? First amnesia now, an acute case of stupidity. You're a mess, Strong. I don't need this. I don't need this either. And I don't need you. I don't like you, Alan. You hurt Karen in any way, shape, or form, and I'll be hell on you. That's a promise. Let's go. Excuse me, sir. This is Gene Montgomery live. Did we understand correctly that you are the witness police have kept secret for several days? Please. If so, why have you waited so long to come forward? If you can identify the hammerhead killer, why haven't you? calling you since early this morning. There's something I have to tell you. This is very hard. It's hard to even think about. What's wrong? I need you to help me. Alan. I don't know where else to turn to. Tell me I'm listening. I saw you on the scene, Mr. Witness. I'm on you. Alan! But I'm not finished with you yet. Nobody's gonna stop me. Give me now, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Karen? Helen. 
cut him. So then you whacked him. That's it. How many times? I've already told you. Tell me again. Twice. Two times? Two times. I just want to get it straight. You've heard this a half a dozen times. I never knew cops were this stupid. So you hit this man, Raymond Wilcock, two times with a pipe. Yes, that's it. You've got it. Can I leave now? No, I'm still fuzzy on a few points. How come I'm not surprised? Why did you call Officer Karen Hicks for that particular payphone? To propose marriage, Officer Manson. You want to be here for another five hours? Why did you call? Um, I called to uh, apologize for canceling our session. Then what happened? Again? Again. Karen. Hate to admit it, but your boy here got him. You did good. Welcome back to Puzzles and Singles. It's nice to have you with us again. Good evening, Mr. Strong. Two for dinner? Yes, please. I'll see you in just one moment. Uh, Miss English, if you'll follow me, please, so your party's waiting. Excuse me. What was it you were going to tell me on the phone this afternoon? Come to some realizations. Oh? I don't think I'm going to get my memory back. Don't say that. No, you don't understand. Doesn't matter anymore. I'm ready to start my life right here, right now. With you. Alan. Karen, I'm serious. Past just doesn't make any difference anymore. Look, when you say we go away, just you and me for a couple of weeks, spend some time. Where? It doesn't matter where, you name the place. Just don't say no. I haven't felt like this in a long time. Is that a yes? Yes. Sure. So, you want to come up for a while? Just a little while. I can't. I have to do a psych workup on Raymond Wilcott for the district attorney's office. Call me tomorrow, huh? You gotta make reservations.
Seven two thirty, and run him against yesterday's latest at the Powell murder scene. You're wrong, dead wrong. We'll see. <sighs> Ellen, where are you? Please pick up the phone. The U.S. are being eased somewhat. U.S. exporters will continue to put pressure on Washington in an effort to balance the trade deficit. Continuing now with our top local story, police have released the identity of the Hammerhead Killer's latest victim. She is 44-year-old tax accountant Carla English. Police have moved all spectators and press out of the area. Welcome back to Puzzles and Sandwich. Covering the Hammer Killings and his close to the Yes, Murray, I'm live at the scene, or as close to the scene will allow. The cordons have been tightened and police appear genuinely panicked at this point. Without any leads or suspects, the pressure from the public at City Hall has become a crush on the Special Homicide Task Force responsible for stopping this wave of criminal murders. Gene, have you been able to speak with any of the investigating officers on the scene? How do you think it's choosing? strong while it was hospitalized, do match a set of latents we lifted off the Powell murder scene. I knew it. It's a mistake. There's no mistake. What are you doing? My job. Carl, please don't do this. Alan's not a murderer. Open your eyes and take a look at the evidence. You suspected him long before we did, didn't you? I thought so. Are you coming? Sorry, I, I, uh, I didn't know where else to go. 
Who else to talk to? Come in, come in. What's wrong? <clears throat> I just don't want to be alone. Carlisle. I moved here from Minneapolis. Well, if you ever need a chef, I'm your man. After. I might as well be standing in somebody else's apartment. Who do you think will knock off tonight? You were there. That's why I hear someone How do you know? The idea in your wallet. Through the flames, you see a face. Kill his face. Alan? Alan? You okay in there? Um, fine. Um, uh, I, uh, knocked something over. I'm sorry. You sure you're all right? Do you still want me to call the police? <laughs> Uh, uh, no, no, I, uh, I, I just, uh, I'm sorry to bother you. I just need to get some rest. I've been under a lot of stress. I understand. Uh, again, I'm, I'm very sorry. You need to talk? My door is always open. Get some rest. Me. Just listen. Let him talk. Tell it to your lawyer. I am not Alan Strong. No, you're not. I am. Get back. You're a smart woman. You're a lucky man. Now, come on. Let's get him in the elevator.
That's right. Going up. Handcuff yourself to the cop. Why did you do this to me? At first, to disappear. When I saw you at the scene, I thought you were dead. But then when you turned up alive, with no memory, and the police assuming that you were me, I did it to survive. I drugged your food and water so that you would have your nightmares, your paranoid delusions. I intercepted the business delivery from the restaurant. Found the names. Everybody out. I truly enjoyed my night's activities. To the living room, please. I would enter the apartment with a pass key. And with your mind under the drug's influence, I took you on a magic carpet ride. As you slept, I would sit beside you, and I would tell you in loving detail all about my night's activity. It was very therapeutic. Your mind did the rest. You wanted me to believe that I... Of course. You and the police. I planted evidence, transposed fingerprints, everything down to the last detail. So that when you committed suicide this evening, there would be no doubt as to your guilt. I'm a person. I have a past. You can't just make me disappear into your life. You're new to the city. No friends, no living relatives. Who would know? But of course, sometimes plans have to be changed. Now, instead of suicide, You'll be shot dead by this lovely police woman. But not before dealing her a fatal blow yourself. Remember the night of your rampage? A suggestion made to a drugged mind. The same drug that I placed in your glass of water downstairs. I said, kill the woman. I said, do it!
Ah. Oh, God. You'll live. Karen, I heard everything. Tell him I was wrong. 